first time the Badminton World Federation have promoted five of the 12 Super Series tournaments to premium status. Well, it's a hive of activity outside and the atmosphere is building inside this Istora Stadium. We've had bands playing, we've had spurs. It really has been building to a tremendous atmosphere. Five finals, of course, for you this afternoon. But as I say, this is event number six. And of the Super Series tournaments played so far, we've already had two premier events. The Korean Open was the first ever premier event and the first ever million dollar event as well. The All England, that status too, and now the Indonesian. The fourth will be the Danish Open and the fifth, the China Open. And there is the list of all 12 tournaments. And of course, at the end of the season, the top eight players in each discipline will take part in the Super Series finals. So finals day here. And what a lineup we've got. Well, China have only twice previously won the men's doubles at the Indonesia Open, but they're guaranteed it this year because it's the only Chinese men's doubles final. Then women's singles and the two-time defending champion, Saina Neymar, going for her third consecutive title against former world number one, Wang Yuhan. And then Lee Chong Wei, he's also defending champion and also going for his third consecutive, his fifth title in total if he was to beat. Peter Gaynor today. Following that, we'll have the two Indonesian involvements in the finals with the women's doubles and the mixed doubles. Well, we've had the speed gun on all the players all week, and I can tell you that Fu Haifang, living up to his reputation as the fastest smasher in world badminton. And so too, Camilla Ruta Yul, the tall day, she heads the women's list as well. So that just proving what a fast and furious game badminton is. Well, I'm Jill Clark, sitting alongside former England head coach Ian Wright. And I have said that the atmosphere is already building. It's going to build more and more to the last two finals with Indonesian involvement. Yes, absolutely. I think we're in for a treat today. There's some really top-class finals. There's been a lot of upsets all week, but when we've got to the finals, We've got some terrific players there. Well, talking of terrific players, here are the current world champions and current world number ones. Only seeded three here because, of course, when the draw was done and the seedings were made, they were only number three in the world rankings. In fact, last week they were only number three, but having won in Singapore last week, they got themselves back to the top of the world rankings. Well, their opponents in today's final, their teammates Chai Biao and Guo Jindong. And they are, they broke the Indonesian hearts last night, the last of the semi finals when they beat Asan and Septino of Indonesia. Three thrilling games it was, too. Well, these two pairs will know each other's games inside out. There's no doubt of that. They train together on a daily basis. Eddie Rufianto is our umpire, just doing the toss of the coin. Jim Cabet of France will be the service judge. Neutral court officials for every match. So, as far as this final is concerned, the only final this afternoon where the same nation represented both sides of the net. And it is surprising to me that China have only won the men's doubles title here in Indonesia twice previously. The last time was, of course, when Kai Yun and Fu Haifang won in 2007. Prior to that, 2003, Sang Yang and Zheng Bo. So these two pairs right at the top of their game. The three times world champions from Jiangsu and Guangdong province, as we see our court officials. 
first won the world title, Kai Yun and Fu Hai Funk, back in 2006, beating a British combination of Blair and Clark. Then won it again in 2009 and retained their title last year in Paris, beating Ku and Tan from Malaysia in a thrilling final. Their opponents, Choi Biao and Guo Jindong, playing only their seventh individual tournament together. Only got together at the beginning of this year. So they did play one tournament at the end of last year, reached the quarterfinal of Hong Kong. But they started the year so well, winning the first of the Super Series events for 2011, the Malaysian Open. And as you can see, seeding of eight and world ranking of 17, actually up five places in the world ranking, but they only have seven tournaments towards that world ranking. And it's bound to go up even higher after this week as well. Well, their path through to today's final, incredibly, they haven't played against a seeded pair. And that really is quite remarkable. But as I was saying, that semi-final yesterday, the last match on court against Mohamed Hassan and Bruno Septimo of Indonesia, they dropped the opening game, but came back very strongly indeed. In fact, the Indonesians were always trying to play catch-up in that third game, but it was a long match, an hour and four minutes. So as far as Kai Yun and Fu Hai Feng are concerned, as I say, they are the world number ones, up two places from three last week and their win-loss record for the year very impressive because they've won two tournaments already the asian badminton championships and of course last week the singapore super series event beating alvin julianto and hendra gunawan in that final and they had to play that same indonesian pair first round here Players at the indonesian up. open and the only time they've been taken the full distance 51 minutes for that first round encounter and from there They've got better and better, including a quarter-final against the number five seeds, Go Sung Hyung and Lee Yong Sung of Korea. And yesterday in the semi-final, in a repeat of the Olympic final from Beijing, they overcame the Olympic champions Marcus Kido and Hendra Setiawan, 21-18, 21-15. So, as they make their final preparations, Ian, were you surprised at the statistic of... China only winning the men's doubles here at the Indonesian Open only twice previously? Yes, that is a big surprise, I have to say. I would have thought in the early days you would have expected Young Bo and Bingy maybe to have got a title on the board at some stage, but uh, no, it's a bit of a surprise. Yes, in fact, Indonesia and the men's doubles have been very, very dominant over the years. 20 of the 29 previous men's doubles titles going Indonesia's way. So it was obviously a big disappointment to the fans last night with that thrilling men's doubles that it didn't go to the Indonesian pairing. Ladies and gentlemen, on my right, Chai Biao, Guazimdong, China. <coughs> so the reigning world champions, the far side of the court, the left and right handed combination. Fu Hai Feng, of course, the left hand out. And the man with the hardest smash of the tournament so far. There are one or two empty seats in the stadium at the moment, but I can tell you they're queuing for tickets outside. There's such a little hub of activity outside with tents where you can get food, you can have your photograph taken, there's a giant screen outside, and I suspect one or two of the spectators have just not made their way into the stadium as yet, but it's still a great atmosphere. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. 
turn and serve deep into that back corner. Welcome, sir. Spectator on the court, I suspect. That's a good return. Very good. The big splash from Flew in the rear court, setting up his partner Kayun in the forecourt. No mistakes, he's so lethal in that front court area. I felt in the semi-final last night, big occasion. Big Indonesian crowd supporting his opponents, but he started off much better this match, I'd have to say. Looks as though he's going to be able to play free in this match, less pressure maybe. Having reached the final, he looks a lot more relaxed. Yes, of course, the number eight seeds, in all essence, have nothing to lose. They're playing against the world number ones. Their teammates, all the pressure on Fu and Kai. Well, the umpire overruling the line judge. There was a big wave of the arms. Oh, yes, it was out. Good call by umpire Eddie Ruffianto. Yeah, good umpiring. Yes, they're very much the underdogs, but of course, sometimes it's an advantage playing your team play. teammates, even though they're probably, you know, they'll be expected to, to beat you, but you know their game so well. It's certainly been the case so far that Yao in particular has been able to read the play on the front court, get in, create some opportunities for his young partner. It's been a very positive start. Biggest of smashes, but certainly well placed. Notice that Chai Biao was waiting, committed to that backhand defence. Yeah, once or twice already in this match when they've hit onto Chai Biao in the backhand defence, he's been very aggressive and tried to counter straight away. <laughs> well, I say not his fastest smash, 279. It's not at all bad, is it? Just yes. under 174 miles per hour. Just warming up. Maybe break his tournament record in this match with a start like that. A back level. Four point deficit has been closed. Once he starts to move forward, I think you've really got to take the play away from him. Uh, they were guilty of just hitting back into his area as he was advancing, and he loves that game. That's a good judgment. This is a run of six straight points. Yeah, just long. Yeah, good judgment. And we see how quickly Kayan's moving forward, and that forces his opponents to lift. 
As we've been saying all week, it's much more difficult to control from this near end. By far the quicker end. Oh, confusion. Look at that, great reactions, then around the, the back, and then the cross block coming up here, changes the direction. Chabi Hour live to the situation, good position in the forecourt, easy kill. Very well taken from Chai Biao. Oh. Yeah, very quick reactions. He got a good short serve in, got his racket up quickly. He was able to compete with Kai Yun on the front court to good effect. That's well set up. Channel attack. Disappointed with himself, he was pleased when the smash came onto his backhand defence, but then he tried to put pace on cross. He, although he knows his opponents very well, he got confused and hit onto the forehand side of uh, Fu, the left-hander. So to the mid-game interval, with a two-point advantage, the world number ones. Number three seats. Eight minutes of play, and of course, no coaches involved because the coaching staff from China just happen, just happy to leave it to the players' own devices. A bit like the good old days when we were both players here. No mid-game into all then. No. Had to get on with it. As you'd expect, it's been. During the break, it's been Zeng Dong taking the responsibility. And with his younger partner, some advice. So quickly in rotation, they get high on the court. The pace of the movement creates problems because it's difficult to pick where the left and the right hander are. You find yourself hitting up the wrong into the wrong areas. And again, very quick reactions after the service. Pick the block return, took it very early, pushed past the net player. Doesn't leave the rear court play many options, no pace below the net. From the mid court, very, very difficult to find a solution. That's good though. Serve is short of the front service line. Service error not helping the underdog's cause. Well, immediately apologizes for hitting Kuo Zhengdong. It's great defence, but once Fu and Kai get the attack, it's very, very difficult to 
to turn the defence into attack. They cover the court so well. Look how high on the court they are. Both of them there finishing at the front of the court. Very, very difficult to find space once they get into that attacking formation. saw the difference feeling high actually on defense early in that rally but they found space on their opponent's court and were able to turn the defensive position into attack long conversation going on between Chai Biao and Guo Zhengdong Oh, it's landed in. Yeah. Kayun actually had the chance to attack there and chose the block. That's good control in defence, good defensive lift there. Not easy to do in this hall. First time he played from the net in that rally, Kai Yun used the block once again. He's using that to great effect yesterday against the Olympic champions. Yes, he gets in and takes it so early, that's the key. He's very quick, he doesn't let the shuttle come to him in the front court. He moves on to the shuttle all the time, takes it early, reduces his opponent's time and options. Pushed it long. Well, after being 3 7 down, the world champions really have turned on the, the game. They've gone up a pace and really have dominated since then. A bit of trickery there, but feels they're well in control of this match. Thought he'd try something a little bit different. Well, uh, good, good play from the younger boy there. Try be out. Not scared to come in and try and take his senior senior players on in the front court there, and that's what he needs to do in this match. He needs to get more positive, try and get up the court, take some risks, close the space down. Again, seeing his, seeing his partner move forward that time, move forward with him. To pick off the mid court interception. so lethal when they do get on the attack as you say both of them encroaching in towards the net both hunting the shuttle and also often it's Kai Yun who eventually puts the shuttle away seven game points now to Kai Yun and Fu Haifa oh that's 
once again. Encroaching forward, both of them. And their opponents just couldn't get the shuttle away. Eyes off balance, but look at Fu's positioning there. Absolutely right, Ian. He was on the front tee. Just reads his partners a little bit off balance and steps up to cover him on the forecourt. It's such a good combination. They really have good understanding. And as I say, very difficult to break down once they get the attack. So look at the stats there. More net winners, as you would expect, from Kai Yun. Stepping in and getting to control. Not one flick serve in the whole match yet. That's quite interesting. Well, I seem to remember one in. Definitely remember a flick serve. But um, it is interesting that neither pair really wanting to to lift the shuttle and certainly from the onset of the rally as one would expect in doubles yeah, it's been a feature this week it is one of the quicker hauls and there's been less flicks than we'd probably normally see I think during the whole tournament but understanding the pairs understanding very quickly in this hall that the battles to get the attack you can serve and return well in this hall and you create attacking opportunities you've got a real chance to to accept their own pairs. So no doubt the world champions will be trying to keep that sort of form going here in the second. Really probably want to stamp their authority on World Badminton. Now that they're back at world number one, they want to show the world that they really are the best in the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think the I think their opponents in the coaching break, I'm sure Guo Zhengdong was talking to his younger partner and saying, look, you know, we've lost the first game, we've got to forget about that. We're playing from the easier end in the second set. We would just be trying to pick out one or two positives to turn around and get going again. Oh. Certainly if they can get the attack from this end that they're playing now, it's more difficult for their opponents to use the rear court so they can push forward a little bit more themselves, try and turn the situation around. But it's a tough task to take the forecourt off Kai Yun when he's in this form. But that's good, good angle. And the shuttle down, forcing Kai Yun to play from below the net and not giving him any pace to feed on. That's good play, good thinking. Service fault called, struck above the waist. Chai Biao doesn't like the call, but I have to say, I think he was called yesterday, wasn't he, Ian? He was, yes, and we, we also saw it in the All England as well. And he was getting called for his flick serves. It's a good return. Uh, uh, super drop. That's an intelligent play from this end, using the drop. Even if they get it back, they've got to come in and use the high lift and high lifts from this end tending to float out the back so tactically a very sound play take the pace off there great rotation again Ryan in the rear court two shots later there he is in his favoured front court position a little bit of look with the net cord but lovely rotational play you see Kayun in the rear court taking the pace off following it in going for the channel attack down the middle but finding the net cord this time see how hard he hits it with the effect it had on the net there
not going for full power. from the rear court from Chai Biao. Setting it up for his partner. And a nice change of pace as well. Didn't try to hit everything hard there. Mixed it up. Yeah, and probably pressurising the right player as well because if there is a weakness with Fu Haifang, it's perhaps his defensive play. Yeah, I think he's improved it a lot, actually. In the so do I. Very much so. In the last year or so, but uh, I would say it's, he's still the slightly weaker link. Perseverance from Zheng Dong. Didn't lose patience and snatch it. Just kept the shuttle going down. Five. Judgment. Yeah, I just feel there, Chaibao, he got the good serve in. He can't be letting his opponents play a block return when you get a, when you get a good short serve and you've got to dominate that net area. Lifting from that position really shouldn't be an option. And there's, there's the difference, Kai Yun got the good serve in. It was a good block return, but he didn't lift it. He competed for the attack on the front court and eventually won the point. And there we see it. He doesn't lift from below the tape. He goes for the counter, counter block and eventually wins the point. And his young opponent can learn a lot from that. Service fault called, struck above the waist. It's happening a lot on the flick serves, isn't it? off balance got it going down got the shuttle going down and gave his partner time to get into position 